Do you want to write and publish a research paper in a Scopus index journals, but you're not sure where to start, you're not sure how to tell a coherent story, maybe you're stuck in one part of the paper and you don't know how to develop it further, you're not sure how to express your research ideas in precise and concise language? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you a proven template that shows you exactly how to write a research paper from start to finish. Now, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kichkovic and I run Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers write, submit and publish research papers in top journals in the field. And you might be wondering, like, how do I know that this template that you're going to give me will actually work for my field? And this is a question I get very, very often from people who think that all fields are completely different. But that's not true. 80% of a paper, think of it as an iceberg, 80% of the paper that's below water is exactly the same across different fields. If you're writing an experimental paper, if you're writing a theoretical one or a systematic review, that might be different. But if we're talking about an experimental research paper, really 80% of the paper is exactly the same regardless of the field. But what people focus on is that 20% that is above water and is visible. So granted, there are differences between fields, but they don't constitute more than let's say 20% of how a paper would be written. So is it possible to develop a template for writing research papers that shows you the structure, the language and all that? Of course it is. It won't cover 100% of your paper, you will have to make about 20% adjustments to your paper, but 80% of it will follow a template, which really speeds up your progress. It allows you also to be more accurate and publish it in better journals. And this template that I'm about to show you has been really developed as well through my own experience publishing papers and also having helped over 400 PhD students and researchers write their own papers across all sorts of fields from you know theology and anthropology through biology, chemistry, quantum physics, business, you name it. We've helped students like that using exactly this template and I've never shared it before outside of my paid programs, PhD Accelerator and Research Paper Mastery. So I think this is going to be really valuable and help you write your paper. Right, so this is the empirical paper blueprint and I'm gonna walk you through how it works so that you can apply it also in your own writing to tell a more coherent story in your paper. If you're getting stuck, to quickly get unstuck so you know exactly what elements need to be included to maintain really good flow and coherent story in any empirical paper regardless of your field. Now, if you want access to these materials, they're not available anywhere on um, YouTube. Book a free one-to-one -one consult with my team as these materials are part of our research paper mastery program where we exclusively work with PhD students and researchers who want to publish three or more papers every single year. If that's you, you can get access to these materials on Research Paper Mastery. Just book a free one-to-one -one consult with us and we'll see if Research Paper Mastery is a good fit. With that said, um, the first thing that you want to do, as I said, imagine this iceberg, right? 80% of the iceberg is below water, 20% is above water. 80% of the paper is going to be exactly the same regardless of which field you're in. However, 20% will be different. So it's really important that we bear in mind these differences. We don't focus on them too much, but we've got to bear them in mind. And what you need to do right at the very start is to find five papers, okay? and look at the length of the paper, because that really determines a lot of things, you know. In some fields, it's common that papers are like 6,000 words, including references. In others, papers can be 10, 12,000 words. So make sure that you look up at least five papers, empirical papers, and put the length in here, I would say, without references. So that's going to give you then the average for your field. And I know this is just based on five papers, so it's not the exact average, but we want to get the ballpark figure to see what sort of thing are we aiming for. Are we sort of aiming for 6,000 words or are we aiming more for like 10,000 words? Because that's going to determine a lot of things, okay? And then you want to look more specifically at each section of the paper. I'm going to show you the blueprint in a second. And then you will have to adjust the lengths of each section here based on the average in your field. So again, you look at the same five papers, you just select the introduction section in Word and see how many words it is, and then you count the average, okay? And then 
as you go through the table, you're going to have to adapt some of the sections, right? So looking at the five papers that you found, you're going to be looking specifically which of the elements that I'm going to talk about here are present, which aren't present, and are they always in the same order or in a slightly different order in your field. So that will be the 20% work that you will have to do in order to adapt this, and then 80% is exactly the same. So let's dive right in and look at the empirical paper blueprint. So, you know, the suggested length is between six to 10,000 words without references. But again, you wanna write down the average length in your field, because that can vary. When we look at the introduction, it's gonna be 500 to 1,000 words, again, depending on your field. So write the average here for your own field. And then there are one, two, three, four, five, six main sections, four of them, 90% are going to be there, two are optional. The first, you always start the introduction with the importance of the topic and often uh, the definition of the topic as well. Usually this is just one paragraph. Then you move on to the brief literature review. So this can be two, three paragraphs, but it can also be just one paragraph. Again, it really depends on your field, so that's why you wanna check it. And then there is always a research gap. Typically it's one paragraph, but it can also be like two or three sentences, immediately followed by the A, okay? And then optional, but it does happen more and more often, main contributions of your paper, and then the structure of your paper, not that common, but yes, in some fields you'll present the structure of the paper, especially I've seen in more qualitative fields in social sciences. So that's the introduction done, super simple. Okay, that's the structure of the introduction. And then in here, you wanna just see if this is done in your field or not. And then you can start taking notes on each of those sections for your specific paper. The best thing to do is actually to pause this video as I'm going over it and just take notes on the importance of your topic. What is the research gap for your specific topic? Just write down some bullet points and ideas as I'm going over this template. And then literature review, this is completely optional. There will be fields like let's say in medicine, very often there is no literature review section. But in other fields, especially broadly speaking in social sciences, there's often a separate literature review section. And usually, by definition, if there is no literature review section, usually the introduction is slightly longer. And if there is a literature review section, usually the introduction is slightly shorter. That's a rule of thumb as well. What do you do in the literature review? Well, you just review the main kind of topics and subtopics related to your research question or aim. You might want to define key concepts, you know, you want to review key themes from literature, and most importantly, you want to do critical analysis. And if this is too quick, I've got another video that is specifically about writing a literature review that you can check out as well. The next part is the theoretical framework. This is again optional and this is really, again, broadly speaking, in social sciences. You will hardly ever see a paper in, you know, something like biology, chemistry, um, physics, that will have a theoretical framework. They don't have them. But many social sciences require a theoretical framework. And I know a lot of people struggle with it, but it's actually pretty simple. What you need to do is just define the theory or theories that you're using to inform your study and justify why they are used. It's, it's that simple and it's pretty short as well. Now, methodology. This is not optional, it's gonna be there always. You might want to start with the definition and justification of the research methodology. So for example, you know, this study was a um, randomized controlled trial and that at the start, you can define the overall methodology. Now, background information about the context of your study. I should add in here that it's optional. It really depends on your field. And again, you know, more in sort of like social sciences, qualitative studies where, where you're doing your study is very important, you would include it. But also in some quantitative fields. For example, I've got a client who's researching immigration after cyclones in Bangladesh. So clearly the area that he's studying, you know, the coastal areas in Bangladesh is very important, like precipitation, temperature, the demographics, you know, how many people live there, all that sort of stuff. So he would need to include that. So you want to check in empirical papers in your field. Now this, you will always include a sample and sampling techniques, meaning what people or what objects, materials did you actually study and why did you choose them and how did you choose them? If that people are animal subjects, you also want to outline the ethical considerations. Then research tools and procedures. So this is basically, you know, what instruments you use to gather data. Let's say you're in a qualitative field, you use interviews. Maybe you use questionnaires or maybe you use specific 
microscopes and things like that to, I don't know, study proteins or whatever it is. And then you want to tell us what you did step by step with that specific research tool. And finally, data analysis techniques. So in other words, how you analyze data. Whether you're in a qualitative field or a quantitative field, doesn't matter. You've got to tell us what you did step by step to analyze your data and if relevant, define any data analysis techniques. Then results, we're getting into the uh, exciting part of your paper, results. So basically you're going to present the main results. Usually they're organized by themes or if you have more than one research question, you're going to organize them by the research questions. And then probably within that, you will inevitably organize them by themes and sub-themes. So that's where you present your results. Discussion, really simple, actually follows a proven process. What you do in the discussion section, you restate the result that you want to discuss. That, that's how you would really structure each paragraph or each section in the discussion. Restate the main result, briefly, very briefly. Compare the results with the literature, show similarities and differences. If relevant, explain your findings. Let's say you got an unusual finding, explain why this might be the case. If your results differ a lot from previous studies, explain why. Why do you have different results from previous studies, right? So you explain. And then you interpret the findings, meaning you tell us what your findings mean. What do they suggest? What do they imply? So that's the interpretation of the findings. And then really you want to follow that structure for every paragraph or every section of discussion. Conclusion. This can vary widely in length, right? There are fields like, for example, medicine, where there is no separate conclusion section, but discussion and conclusion are one section. In some fields, the conclusion will be one paragraph. In other fields, the conclusion will be a thousand words. So it really differs in terms of length and what you do. There. But some of the common elements, you restate the main aim and the topic. You recap the key findings and contributions. Okay, so this is key. You want to talk about your most novel main contribution of this paper, the, the really key takeaway message. Okay, plus offer some brief discussion of that. What, what does that actually mean? And then typically you talk about practical implications of the findings, if you do have them. If not, don't worry. And then limitations and suggestions for future research usually go together. Now, with that said, limitations and suggestions for future research can also be placed in the discussion section. In fact, in some fields, you'll have a separate subsection within the discussion called strengths and limitations, where you go over limitations and then make suggestions for future research. So that's it. That's the whole blueprint. And as I said, if you want to get access to it, book the free one-to-one -one consult so that we can see if Research Paper Mastery, where I share this blueprint and discuss everything in much more detail, is a good fit for you. Now, if you found this template valuable, but you would want personalized help to actually apply it to your specific situation so that you can publish papers in better journals, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation with my team. And the link to do that is right below this video.